Hey, y'all, I'm just sitting here thinking. I've actually been thinking a lot lately in between working. And um, I realized that I am so tired. Like, I'm ready, not only dealing with, um, you know, physical stuff, but just in general, ready to get to that place where, like, I can just live and have my peace and all of that stuff. And so, if you know... um, a couple years ago, I moved over to Hawaii and I was there about 18 months, I would say, off and on. So I'd be here in um, in Texas and then I would go there. So like flip flop 30 days and 30 days or something like that. And, um, and you know, that was it was cool. Um, I got over there and before I went, I really thought it was going to be a a physical situation, like a disability, uh, situation for me because I was dealing with autoimmune. I was dealing with extreme, uh, degenerative arthritis and all of that. And so, um, and my doctor was like, a lot of this is stress related. You've got to do something different. And so that time sold my business and, Um, or at least one of them and, you know, decided, hey, I'm going to take off. I'm going to um, go over there, do some Airbnb stuff, which I did do, which I loved. And we'll talk about that later. Did that, had uh, four properties that were uh, being rented in the Dallas, Texas area um, on Airbnb, which was great. So just doing a lot of stuff. But in that time, what I noticed was, um, so let's say I sold the business in November of 19-ish, or at least transitioned it to different management is probably a better word, uh, in November of, of 19. And then in 20, um, I hired a team and we decided because there was a portion of what I did, which has been the IRS settlement stuff that I will always do. I love it. I'm good at it. It's, you know, it's just my zhuzh. So I continued to do that. And because most of that is remote, it wasn't a problem. I continued to do that. But um, I had a team here, had a team in Colorado, uh, a team in uh, Florida, uh, in a couple of teams international. And I thought, you know, with this, we can build and regrow. And we did, you know, things start build. This was in 2020, started building back up and going and everything was great. I was working mostly from Hawaii. Um, and what was great about it is Hawaii at the time was, you know, was five hours different, which meant like I would get up at like 3 a.m. Hawaii time, but I'd be done working by noon, um, uh, you know, Hawaii time. And then I'd just be at the beach or relaxing or sitting outside. The ocean was in my backyard. So literally sitting on the patio, looking at, you know, the boats go by or whatever, just very very relaxing. And, you know, and when I think about it, it wasn't even the relaxation wasn't even as much about like the beach or it was just the nature, the air, like the air was cleaner, the air. Now it was very hot. I will say that it was extremely hot. And uh, part of what's happening with me from an autoimmune standpoint is I'm extremely sun sensitive. So that and Hawaii didn't go so much together, but that's why it was great because I could go out early and be out. So by the time the heat heat of the day would come, I would be back home and, you know, I was I'd be in bed ready, you know, by five or six p.m. in the evening. So it all worked for me. Um, But because I was still pretty much working on central time. Um, and, And that was amazing. But the thing about it was the cost in Hawaii. And I know a ton of people were like, well, God, everything's so so expensive over there. Everything's so expensive. But, you know, it's all relative. You know, it's all relative. So, you know, yes, it's expensive. But at that time, um, I don't, you know, the peace of mind was worth all of it. Right. And it worked for me. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, at the time, I guess, 
I wasn't at, probably as responsible as I should have been and cared as much as I should have about the dollars. And that came back to bite me a little later. Um, but that's a whole different story. But, but um, you know, for me, it felt very much like mainland, like here, right? Um, and so that wasn't so much of an issue. And then there were stream, different streams. I had the Airbnbs and other streams of income. So, so that wasn't a problem. But, you know, the thing that, you know, so, so, so let's just talk about, cause this, I'm going to go in this video, I'm going to talk about like where I am now. Cause I'm back in the place where the U S mainland isn't it for me. Um, and I built my life to where I can work from anywhere. I can work remotely. Um, and so I know for my peace of mind and my health, not just mental health, but also my physical health, I, you know, I've got to, I've got to make choices so that I can be here for my grandson and for my son and my family and my sister and my nieces and nephews and everybody. Right. And so, um, so we're going to go down this path, but I want to share because in Hawaii, it was great. I loved it. It was peaceful. I can just literally go there and see the water. As a matter of fact, I'll probably do, you know, add that to this video. Um, just some of the visuals and, and just the beautiful plants and the fertile ground and just so peaceful, so peaceful. And I miss that. Um, I do. But even there, there was this thing in the background. Yes, there was peace. Yes, there was a cleanliness and, and just a purity about being there. Um, but in the background was always that knowing in order to be able to sustain this peace, in order to be able to sustain this lifestyle, I'm going to be working forever, like forever, or else I'm going to retire and then have to take it down like 20,000 notches, right? And, you know, and at that time, I mean, it's always in the background. And so, you know, I've heard people say, you know, you build and you run and you get in the rate, uh, rat race and you chase success and then you get in success. And now the next uh, stressor is not losing that success, not losing those properties or that that peace of mind or that whatever. Right. And I don't know if that was it because I've never, you know, I've lost, I started from nothing. I've gone to nothing numerous times in my life. I've built businesses and lost businesses. So, you know, had marriages and lost marriages. So, so I'm not afraid of loss, but there, that little thing in the background for me was not like, I need to get to this next level, right? But it was, I want to get to... Because I had the peace, so I don't want to say I had to get to the peace, but it's security. That's it, probably. That's probably it. The security in knowing that this is something that is mine. Like, it's mine. It's not contingent on someone else providing that for me. It's something that I can continue to provide for myself. It is well within, like well within, not like, okay, yeah, I can make 30, 40, 50,000 a month and, you know, my bills are 15, 20, 30, 40,000 a month. Like not that, not that, but I mean like live where my bills are 500 a month, a thousand a month, like I know that that's not really possible in Hawaii, like with my lifestyle, right? Or at least where my lifestyle was, nor is it possible on the mainland U.S. with my lifestyle and where my lifestyle is. Um, but what I hadn't considered until recently in the in the most recent months is that it is possible in other parts of the world. And I remember 
when I got married in, in 2011 to um, who I believe was, you know, um, I do believe was um, one of my soulmates. Um, there was a lesson in that um, and a, a purity in that love. And so in that marriage, one of the things that we did uh, for our honeymoon is we went to Jamaica and then we made a habit of going to Jamaica every year. And it was amazing. We would go and we'd swim with the dolphins and and we'd ride the camels and we'd um, we'd operate within you know the 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 towns um the the you know with the locals right and that's a thing about me i'm not a huge cruise kind of person now, i'll do that with a group or a family if they want to do that you know i'll do it more to support but i'm more like i want to fly and i want to be in a property an airbnb in um uh, uh, an apartment. I want to live like and amongst the locals. I want to feel that. But I'll tell you the thing about Jamaica and, and having had that experience before Hawaii, I knew being there was cheaper. As a matter of fact, I had actually started um, going out. I have a driver, a dear friend. I don't even want to call him my driver anymore, but he was my driver at the time. Gary Maxwell, if you ever go out there, look him up. G Max. Um, he does, you know, travel tours, you know, drive you around, all that kind of stuff. Great guy. Um, but he would take me around to local areas and we looked at some lands and we went to this house and I'll never forget would be considered an, a mansion in the U.S. Well, a mansion over there too, but a mansion in the U.S. And I, you know, I think at the time he was saying, oh, you know, you could buy this house, 140000 huge mansion on the top of this cliff. And literally the backyard of it was like the yard and then the cliff, like, and I, I, how let's how high was that thing? I don't know. I'm really bad about measurements. I'm like horrible. Not even just bad. I would say, um, let's see, if if, if, a, if a two story house, yeah, let's say a two story house in America. So then this would be a ten story cliff, right? You know, it'd be that like skyscraper, like you know, like not sky, you know, but ten stories like up. It would be how high this cliff was over the ocean. And I'll probably see if I could get Gary to send me some pics of that because um, that would be neat. I might put that in that video if I get it. Um, but anyway, just beautiful. And then you stand on the back on this cliff and you're just overlooking the ocean. Beautiful, peaceful. And and I remember he said, you know, he, he goes, I ride up here every once in a while. I just look, it's been for sale forever. And, you know, you could buy it if you offered them 140000 you know, they take it and I was like oh my god now of course this was years and years ago so I don't know this might have been 2014 15 16 something I don't know in there um but beautiful beautiful space and I just remember thinking you know when I retire I'm coming to Jamaica I'm gonna come to Jamaica I'm gonna um, move over here and have peace of mind. Just going in the little restaurants and, you know, $10 for a meal and all of just the local lifestyle. And I knew then, like my soul knew, like, this is it. This is home. Like the first time. And it, it wasn't just, I mean, yes, it's there. It's the locals. And in Hawaii, you have that too. You go to the local places and the local eateries and you have that too. But it's something about those places where everybody looks like you. You know, where where it, it's something about that, that calls for my soul. And it's something, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with the other places and with having it you know, the diversity and all of that. That's all great. I grew up with that. I've been around that my entire life. But what I haven't been around um, is a place that felt like home. And so, um, and where I'm going with that, not only just from a cost effectiveness, right, of being in a place 
where people look like me and I'm comfortable, right? And what's so interesting, and I'm going to throw this in here because I remember when I first started going, especially once I guess so after 2016, when I was divorced and I would go back alone and, and every was be, it's so unsafe. You need to stay in a hotel. You, you don't need to travel alone over there. You don't need to do this. And, but like, this is going to places where people look like me, right? I'm not afraid in those places. I'm actually more afra- afraid in some places in the U.S. Like I get more uncomfortable um, going certain places here than I do in those places. And so you know, I think what I'm dealing with now, you know, I loved Hawaii. Like I said, I love Jamaica. Um, there were some things I I learned, came to understand as I spent more time talking to local people from there, you know, that I realized, OK, maybe, you know, maybe that's the place. Maybe it's not. Don't know. Still looking, you know, just still looking. But um, what's caught my attention most recently is Ghana. Because I uh, was looking at something. I started looking. I was looking Mexico, which I love Mexico. I've gone to Mexico a couple times for different things. But one was a surgery. One of the cleanest hospitals I ever was in ever. This is when I was cash paying for surgeries. And you could get it for 10% of what you'd pay for things over here. And uh, much better uh, care. Um, and and that. And um just just amazing. And so again, you know, and ever so be safe, you'll die over there, you know, those doctors don't this and oh, it's not, is it clean? Is it this? You know, like oftentimes so much to our media feeds us information that keeps us so in fear and it keeps us in, I'm so sorry, I've got to adjust a little bit, but it keeps us in the mindset that, um, America is the only place that's safe and the, you know, clean and, and healthy and all of that. And I think the same things that other places have, the same threats, the same crimes, the same, it possibly less serious crimes because the gun laws, uh, in, in many cases are much better other places, um, and the uh, there's something going on right now that I sense in America, and I don't watch the news, so it's not something, anything that I'm sensing or I'm feeling or when I say my soul is calling me, it's really something energetic and spiritual. It's not the news because I don't watch the news. Uh, I try to stay away from media Unless it's YouTube where I'm controlling what I'm going to watch.